Once upon a time, Mr. Wall Street was infatuated with Miss China. He believed that they were a perfect match. One had the money, the other the market. But their love affair was doomed, thanks to Papa Xi's disapproval. Papa Xi didn't like Mr. Wall Street. He thought money guys are shallow. But Miss Didi loved Mr. Wall Street. Against Papa Xi's wish, she eloped with Mr. Wall Street on the eve of Papa's centennial anniversary bash by going IPO on New York Stock Exchange. Papa was so upset that he ordered Miss Didi to get a divorce. Hello everyone, welcome to Lazy Real Talk, I'm Lei. Last week, five months after its IPO in the United States, Didi Global Inc. announced that it had started the process of delisting from the New York Stock Exchange. A pro-CCP overseas Chinese media explained in an article titled, Why Didi Must Delist from the U.S. The reason Chinese high-tech companies listed in the U.S. need to return to the mainland or Hong Kong is to avoid the uncontrollable risks with the ongoing confrontations between the U.S. and China, it said. Papa Xi is afraid that his daughter may be divulging too many secrets to the in-laws and may even become a hostage if something happens between the two families. Back in the summer, after Papa Xi found out about Miss Didi's elopement, he was enraged. He ordered her to leave Mr. Wall Street and return to China. Miss Didi was heartbroken. Papa told her to get ready to see Mr. Hong Kong. I want you to be listed on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange. But Mr. Wall Street didn't want to let her go. He had invested too much in her. Meanwhile, Mr. Hong Kong has been nervous and reacted with mixed signals. In the same release about delisting from New York, Didi announced that it's preparing to be listed on Hong Kong Stock Exchange. Subsequently, the Hengshen Tech Index dropped 1.5% as investors worry that Chinese authorities will keep a tight rein on tech stocks. But at the same time, the stock of Hong Kong Stock Exchange jumped 4.4%. Mr. Hong Kong is consumed by both the excitement of a new relationship and fear. Despite the tumultuous 20-year relationship, Mr. Wall Street has kept pouring money on Miss China, hoping to change her papa's mind. According to the latest annual report by the U.S.-China Economic Security Review Commission, U.S. investments in China's stock and bond markets jumped 58% from $756 billion in 2017 to $1.2 trillion by 2020. But the love affair hasn't been smooth sailing in America either. Papa Trump was the first one against the union and had made Miss China's entry into the U.S. difficult. Now Papa Biden is in power. He has also stayed vigilant on Miss China's behavior. After Papa Xi has ordered Miss China to return home, Papa Biden felt a sense of relief. It's rare that all three Papas are on the same page for a change. But Papa Biden soon discovered that he actually doesn't have a good handle on Mr. Wall Street, and the guy is blinded by love and acts irrationally. The U.S. government prohibits Americans from investing in Chinese companies with ties to the military, but U.S. institutional investors can still buy and sell Chinese military-linked companies and profit from them, as long as they don't do so in the United States and involve only non-U.S. citizens. According to the U.S.-China Economic Security Review Commission, Beijing's military-industrial ecosystem, including state-owned and non-state-owned enterprises, research institutes, and investment funds that serve China's military, poses a threat to the United States. But traditional legal remedies, such as trade and investment restrictions, cannot address these threats. The first serious problem is the substantial increase in the inclusion of Chinese securities in indexes that automatically allocate U.S. investments to Chinese companies, allowing investors to avoid SEC regulation. Now, with the continuous inclusion of China's A shares in major global indexes, the proportion of foreign investors' holdings in China's stock market is increasing. According to China's first trade, the percentage of foreign holdings in the market capitalization of A shares in China has increased from 3.2% at the end of 2016 
to 8.9% in the third quarter of 2020. Compared to portfolio investments, private equity and venture capitals present a bigger risk. A November Wall Street Journal report said that four U.S. venture capital firms, Sequoia Capital, Lightspeed Venture Partners, Matrix Partners, and Redpoint Ventures, have been investing in Chinese semiconductor companies. The four U.S. venture capital firms have made at least 67 investments in Chinese chip companies since the beginning of 2020. While the exact amounts invested are not disclosed, U.S. companies and their China affiliates are stepping up investments in China to help Beijing's bid to achieve chip dominance. Sequoia Capital China, for one, has made at least 40 investments in Chinese chip companies, and some of those investments are in advanced technology areas where the United States hopes to maintain a leading edge. Since the announcement of the divorce, Ms. Didi and Mr. Wall Street have both been low-key, and nobody knows what the divorce agreement is. Mr. Wall Street, however, isn't giving up on the relationship. He has another thing on his mind. After waiting for over a decade, Papa Xi has finally let him set foot in China by granting him a license to operate in the Chinese market. In July, Citigroup got approval to open a custody business in China. In August and October, J.P. Morgan Chase and Goldman Sachs got permission to establish a wholly owned onshore asset management business in China. This is something Mr. Wall Street has wanted for decades. For Mr. Wall Street, there is no greater opportunity right now than China's 54 trillion financial services market. But the question is, how long will Papa Xi allow Mr. Wall Street to be in China? Mr. Tesla was Papa Xi's golden boy a few years ago, and now he has to recite a Chinese poem to make Papa happy. Even the New York Times is asking the same question. Well, Mr. Wall Street can't think that far. He's just happy that he's allowed in. David Solomon, the chief executive of Goldman Sachs, said, Obviously, what we can do in China is largely dictated by how the Chinese government allows us to operate. We're encouraged by the fact that after a long period of time, they're allowing us to control our joint venture. JP Morgan Chase's chief, Jamie Dimon, accidentally spoke his mind when asked about doing business in China at a recent event at Boston College. Uh, I was just in Hong Kong that I made a joke that the Communist Party is celebrating its 100th year. So is JP Morgan. And, and I'll, ma I'll make you bet we last longer. <laughs> I can't say that in China. <laughs> they probably are listening anyway. Well, Papa Xi was certainly listening. Mr. Wall Street then realized that he slipped his tongue. He issued two statements to apologize. But he nevertheless has let the world know what he really thinks of Miss China's family. Papa Xi probably told his daughter, See, I told you never to trust the Wall Street guy. He only cares about money and has no respect for us. As much as Mr. Wall Street despises his love interest's family, he is going to China undeterred. He secretly hopes that he will outlive Papa, so he and Miss China will be reunited one day. If not, he may meet another Miss Didi, perhaps. This is the sequel to the first video I made on the doomed Wall Street China love affair, which is quite hilarious. It's one of my favorites. Please check it out. What else? The end.